the Volkswagen Golf. It's one of the most successful cars ever, currently in its eighth generation. Being so successful, you might expect it to be more aerodynamic than most other hatchbacks, but is it? We tested the GTI version here at 72 kph, which is where drag starts to become the dominant resistive force on a car. I have a friend who has one of these. He also plays golf. We first have these streamlines showing the general path of the flow around the car. They are also colored in the velocity, where blue is 0 meters per second and red is 27 meters per second. Overall, the flow looks pretty decent. There's quite a bit of flow entering the front grille, but because the grille doesn't take up the entire width of the car, much of the flow is forced to change directions pretty dramatically and then flow around the edges. That redirection is wasting some of the flow's energy, so widening the grille more would improve the flow around the edges. The flow over the top of the car is really well done. First of all, there aren't any major redirections, so the flow is more guided. That reduces how much energy is lost. Then, because the flow is so well behaved, it can follow the rear of the roof better and is angled down. That might not seem like much, but that results in the wake being much smaller. And because the wake is so much smaller, the drag drops. But one downside of that is, because the flow is being directed downwards, lift is being produced. The good news is that this lift is produced more around the rear wheels, and because the regular Golf GTI is front wheel drive, having more lift on the rear wheels isn't that bad. It would be worse if the Golf were rear wheel drive because then you'd have less force pushing down on the rear wheels that would reduce the grip and hence acceleration. One thing that is very impressive is how the flow wraps around the top of the cabin. The streamlines first have to flow around the front and the fact that they have to curve so much isn't great. That's because you can see how much redder they become. That means that they're accelerating. One reason why that's bad is because you're not doing anything with that faster flow now. It's faster for no reason now. And anytime you change the flow, you introduce differences between one piece of air and another piece of air. These differences lead to greater viscous effects between these pieces of air, and that results in some of the energy of the flow being transformed into heat, lost energy. So if you can avoid it, you should reduce how much an object is changing the flow. But that's at the front of the cabin. At the back of the cabin, while the flow does change in speed, it slows down, as you can see by it becoming greener, and look at how it just sucks in around the rear. It does a great job pulling in and making the wake smaller, so the car is disturbing the flow less. The way Volkswagen got the flow to do this is that, first of all, making the air stick to the sides of the car. That means that when it reaches the back of the car, you have well-behaved flow to work with. Then Volkswagen angled the C-pillars in. If you look closely, you can see how the blue bit between the side window and the rear window is angled inwards. That inwards direction guides the flow along the same angle. So the flow is guided inwards too, and that helps reduce the wake size and hence the drag of the car. This simulation was done with open foam, and if you want to learn open foam, then check out our courses here. Let's look at the finer details now. So this plane slices right down the center of the car and is again colored in the velocity. Red is 27 meters per second and blue is zero meters per second. There are also little lines showing what the flow is doing. So we can see all these little details of how the air is moving. Initially, the flow looks really good. For example, underneath the front, the flow is really good. In fact, it's even better than the Corvette we looked at here. The reason why it's so good is that you can see how all the little lines are quite well behaved still. They're all fairly straight and only the ones at the very front are redirecting a lot. The reason why there's so much redirection here is for two reasons. The first is that this air is angled literally vertically down and is coming from around the grill, but there wasn't an opening for it or enough room in another opening for that air to fit. So it was forced downwards instead. The second reason why we get such extreme redirection here is that the very lip is actually sharp. You can see this edge right where the black trim is. That is in effect a discontinuity in the geometry. That sharp edge is very hard for the flow to follow. So it jumps over it. It's really hard to see, but there's this tiny bit of blue there. That's telling us that something bad is happening here and we're losing energy. I don't know why Volkswagen made this edge sharp. I mean, it's not a big deal, but minor details like that add up. Perhaps it was just for styling purposes. But this region is very small and almost all of this general underbody area is very good. Because of that, we shouldn't be getting much drag here, and if we look at this video of the drag production over the car, we can see that, yeah, there's only a tiny bit of drag, 
this red bit right where the little sharp edge was. The rest of the underbody area here is perfect. Taking that little edge off would get rid of that red region too. And if we look at the same center plane slice, but now colored in the pressure, where blue is negative pressure and red is positive pressure, the underbody here is producing really good low pressure, which then creates downforce and helps pull the car down. That is happening around the front wheels, which is better for this car because it is front wheel drive. So having more downforce here means that you have more grip, so you can put more power through the wheels without slipping. That means you can accelerate faster. Coming back to this center plane slice with the velocity, the hood and the windshield are surprisingly good. The reason is because if you look at some of our other car videos, like a Mustang, a lot of cars have pretty bad flow where the hood meets the windshield. That's because of the difference in angles, so you have flow traveling in one direction, and then it all of a sudden hits this face at a very different angle, and that means it decelerates, dumping its energy into this face, and then has to redirect. We do get some of that here. You can see how the flow goes from red to yellow and then green, but that deceleration isn't nearly as much as it should be. The reason I say that is because the Golf's windshield isn't angled that much. In fact, if you look at a Golf Mark VI, the hood blends into the windshield a lot better. So in this picture, look at the angle of the hood as it meets the windshield. Then in this video, look at that same region. This angle is sharper, but still, the flow is better than expected. It doesn't decelerate as much as it should. That's because of the very rounded nose. That rounding allows the flow to travel over it very well, but also angles it up more. By the time the flow meets the windshield, it is already angled more than it should be, given the local angle between the hood and the windshield in this region. So the air can go over the windshield better. Moving to the back of the roof, we already saw with the streamlines how they were angled down very nicely, and we see the exact same thing here and in more detail. Looking at the drag, I'm really impressed with how little is produced over the rear window. I guess that is partly because of the roof guiding the flow into the wake so well, and because of how the streamlines wrap around the cabin so well as well. But let's now look at the diffuser because it is very small. It only starts like 30 centimeters from the end of the car, but it still directs the flow up a little. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. That redirection helps produce some downforce, not enough to overcome the roof lift, but still it's some, and it also reduces the wake a little. So when we look back at the drag produced, it's hard to believe, but there would be even more drag here without the diffuser. There's a lot still, and this is the main drag producing region of the car. If we move the center plane over 70 centimeters, we can see the flow under the front is still really good. That's pretty impressive because in this plane, the flow is curving outwards a lot. And I actually think that that outwards curvature is a good thing because now the flow isn't hitting the front sharp edge directly, but instead it comes at it from an angle which reduces its relative sharpness. That is why the flow is good here. We also see the front wheel spoiler, which is this flat plate here extending down. The idea of this plate is that it directs the flow around the front wheels so less flow hits the front of the tire. We can't see in this plane if it actually does that, so let's look underneath instead. So this plane also shows the velocity, but it's a horizontal plane slicing through the tires at 15 centimeters from the ground. We're looking from underneath and up at it. The wheel spoilers definitely help redirect the flow around the front of the tires. You can see how the outside flow is just touching the outside edge of the tire, the shoulder. Looking at the same plane, but now colored in the pressure, the high pressure at the front of the tire is definitely reduced, but it's replaced with higher pressure on the wheel spoiler. So while this region may not have any direct effect on the drag, the flow redirection around the edge of the tire might. Let's look at the drag orbit to see more. So in this drag orbit, we can see that the front wheels are the second biggest drag producers. That is also because of the rims. They are relatively open, which is good for brake cooling, but bad for aerodynamics. But one thing that stands out is that there's almost no drag from the top of the wheel. The drag produced is largely from the lower half. This is in part because of the front wheel spoilers redirecting the flow and arguably increasing the drag in this lower half region. But changing where the flow is exiting out of the wheelhouse and reducing the upper part of the wheel drag. And actually, I think that these wheel spoilers are also reducing the rear wheel drag too, because there is very little from them. And looking at back at this horizontal plane, you can see how the front wheel wakes fan out and engulf the rear wheels. So the flow hitting the rear wheels is slower, and that means that it can't take as much energy from the flow. If we look a little higher, so this plane is 50 centimeters off the ground, the flow around the front wheels is unbelievably good. 
The rear wheels are also very good, but because of how the rear bumper curves inwards straight after the rear wheel, there's no clean air there to fill the gap. So we get a large wake here and the drag orbit shows a lot of drag too. That region needs some improvement. And then moving up another 30 centimeters to 80 centimeters off the ground, still here, the wake is pretty bad. Unlike higher up where we saw around the cabin, the floaters sucked in and created a much smaller wake and with that less drag. Here, the flow separates quite far upstream and doesn't curve around the rear too much. That is why we get so much drag. I mean, if we go up even higher and compare this wake, look how tiny it is. The flow doesn't separate until you're well into the rear window. Volkswagen have done a really good job around the cabin, and with that, we get very little drag here. So this car is really a tale of two parts. The first is the very good upper body, including the cabin and the front. Then we have the second part, which is really bad, and that is the lower half of the car from the wheels backwards. With all of these sections, the drag coefficient comes in at 0.33, which isn't great. You can get some supercars with lower drag coefficients, and that number isn't any better than the average hatchback from even 10 years ago. For the lift at 72 kph, it produces 8.1 kilos of lift, which is pretty bad, although that's to be expected from hatchbacks because of their general shape. Peace and amigos.